The station everyone's talking about, Z103.com, at one minute after the hour of 8 o'clock on the TCB Games Morning Show. The Edgar Winter Group and Frankenstein, Monty the Music Man, Seaburns, and ladies and gentlemen, here he is, Mayor Richard Strick. Good morning, Mayor. How are you? Hey, good morning, Monty, and good morning, Huntington listeners. All right. We are uh, ready to get launched. You were uh, here for your first appearance last week, and uh, uh, here we are all ready to go for another round. Uh, some exciting things happening uh, with uh, some some new things coming to town, and I didn't know if you were at liberty to discuss any of them, uh, but perhaps you might want to, if you are, inform us of what's going on. Well, there there are a few things I can talk about generally, and then there's a couple things that uh, they you know they've let the cat out of their own bag, and so we can talk about those. Okay, so. we'll start with the general ones first. Well, generally, we've got some really significant investments coming in and opportunities with uh, River Forks West and. The new industrial park there, we're very excited about that. And, you know, beyond city limits even, there's some great opportunities happening throughout the entire county. It's been fun watching everybody work together through the challenges of the last couple of years just to make sure that we keep moving forward. And a lot of that is uh, local industry, uh, whether it's locally owned or owned from an outside corporation, making investments uh, in their production facilities here in town and increasing wages for folks as uh, folks are competing for workers and dealing with supply chain issues. But all in all, we're seeing a lot of heavy investment in those areas, and we're very excited about the future that comes with it. Man, that is fantastic. So, and, and really, when you think about it, that's, that is its own version of economic stimulus uh, when you look at it, because uh, money begats money, if you will. People getting those jobs and, and spending more, doing more recreationally, entertainment-wise, food-wise, and that sort of thing. Well, absolutely. And if there's, if there's one thing that we saw proven uh, as we dealt with the, the ups and downs of uh, COVID-19 f- since 2020, we saw proven the principle that when you when you buy and shop local, uh, it stimulates the local economy. And when everybody stayed close to home and they were supporting the locally owned restaurants and businesses, uh, that led to more investments by other restaurants and businesses. You know, and, and even though COVID is an unfortunate thing, it's it's been a game changer in helping those that uh, may not be able to get out as much because, you know, deliveries picked up and more businesses started thinking outside of the box that way as far as getting uh, goods and supplies to people, which was really awesome. Yes, our local business owners had to overcome a lot of challenges with that. And we also want to recognize, too, the the employees that had to adapt and sacrifice along the way as they uh, covered uh, child care for one another, as they covered shifts for one another when folks were out sick. Uh, we've, we've all had to overcome a lot of things these last few years, and we're going to keep supporting each other because, again, at the end of the day, like it or not, we're all in this together, and we can't kick each other out of the boat. Well, that is definitely true. That is definitely true. As long as I'm not driving that boat, that's what <laughs> <laughs> then people might want to jump and swim. I don't know. Uh, now, you said there are uh, some cats being let out of the bag, so uh, maybe we want to talk about that for just a little bit. Sure. Well, there's, there's a couple retail projects that I think folks are, are excited about seeing investments being made. You know, of course, last year there was a lot of activity up at the old Kmart site, and that is, of course, uh, Rural King uh, getting ready for their site. Uh, they they announced a schedule last year. They were planning to open spring of this year, and so we're looking forward to welcoming them to the community. Additionally, we've seen uh, some ads posted on Facebook, and we've had some confirmation from regional stores about a uh, Harbor Freight coming to the community as well. And uh, those are those are exciting prospects for retail. I know folks uh, like seeing those things. And then there's some retail development space uh, going on up uh, up by Walmart, up on the north end of town there. Uh, there's a couple undeveloped uh, retail sites there that are getting built out, and we think that those will fill up pretty quickly, too. Now, do you know anything that's going on? Because I know they had a plaza up there with some buildings that were, I mean, back in the 90s, I remember on Q being up there and and uh, some other stores. I think Maurice uh, Clothing was one of those. Uh, any any plans for those buildings that you know of yet, or, or are we just still in the waiting stage on that? Well, the out-of-town ownership, I think, is, is taking some steps to make investments in the building. We're, we're helping them see some of the areas that need improvement. Uh, we know that uh, last year there were some investments made on their parking lot and trying to improve sections of that. And, again, we, we just recognize that it's going to take them uh, a bit of time to get things back up to speed there. So we want to keep encouraging them and giving them uh, all, the, all the accountability and support to do the right thing for their neighbors. That is just fantastic. You know, one of the things I've been thinking a lot about, Mayor, is uh, transportation in the community. And, of course, with rising uh, fuel costs and and people, uh, there are some that uh, choose not to drive for whatever reason. Have they ever thought about, um, say, maybe a bus line that would run 
uh, from the north to the south end, back up to the north end, maybe every half hour. I mean, I know we have a hat, which you have to, and, and not to take anything away from the Council on Aging, they do a great, great job. In fact, they got me here this morning. Um, but, you know, you have to schedule 24 hours in advance, and sometimes they may not always have right availability. Uh, they fill up pretty fast. Uh, have, have there ever been any thoughts about uh, transportation, public transit? Well, I think that there's uh, there's been a lot of thoughts and conversations about it over the years, and uh, specifically with HAT, I know they've explored the option of having dedicated routes and lines, and uh, and they obviously have chosen not to pursue those at this time. Uh, one of the challenges, I think, especially with uh, overlapping entities of government and, and different functions, is we want to make sure that we each kind of stay in our focus and area. And so for the city's perspective, part of what we see our role as in that is convening folks to solve those uh, those challenges and problems, and that can take a variety of forms, uh, whether it's expansion of services offered through HAT or it's making sure, you know, part of our job is making sure that the city remains as walkable uh, as possible, uh, safe for pedestrians of all shapes and sizes and ages and abilities, as well as cyclists, and that allows folks to have some freedom and flexibility on how they choose to get where they need to go. That is awesome, and there are a number of ways to do that, not only for the wheelchair-bound uh, but for those who may be visually impaired or totally blind, uh, having a more defined, uh, say, a curb structure uh, so they know what streets they're coming up on and even uh, audible traffic signals, I think that could uh, beep or make some sort of intonation uh, in addition to them lining up, obviously, with the parallel traffic as we've uh, all been trained to do. Uh, so have, has that also been explored or...? Yes, actually, Monty, you raise a great point there, too, and it gives me a chance to clarify something because I've, I've heard folks in the community talk about why, why does the city put in these uh, curb ramps to nowhere? And so when we come to an intersection, we're doing roadway improvements. We install uh, new curb ramps up to current ADA standards because we're already there working in that intersection. So whether there's a sidewalk there yet or not, we want to make that installation because we're going to continue to build out the sidewalk network to make sure there is that connectivity. But you're exactly right. Those are those ramps that you see with the uh, the grooved lines and the uh, the bumps on them. Uh, those are to help folks of different abilities and different challenges uh, navigate the streets safely and have a sense of when they're coming to an intersection so they can wait and listen for traffic. Yes, and and I imagine there's also development not only on the uh, main thoroughfares and main streets, but uh, also in the uh, residential areas as well, uh, as far as uh, the thoughts of, of putting more sidewalks in and that sort of thing, because it does definitely make it uh, easier for pedestrian travel, uh, whether you, like I say, a wheelchair, white cane, uh, dog guide, or whatever the case may be. Exactly right. Now, when you, when you talk about uh, sidewalks and residential areas, people tend to uh, they have a lot of questions about that. Well, if they do put a sidewalk in, are, are we financially responsible for that? Is, is there uh, grant money or uh, DOT money for that? What, what does that look like? So, so currently here in the city of Huntington, uh, you, you as the homeowner or the property owner, if you're, if you're talking about a business, you are responsible for the maintenance and uh, uh, mobility issues on that sidewalk. And so it's clearing the snow and the ice in the wintertime, uh, and it's making sure that uh, that folks can use that sidewalk, it's in good condition, whether it's made from brick or it's made from concrete or otherwise. So now, with that, oh, go ahead. Oh, okay, no, no, go ahead, finish your thought there. Sorry about that. So the city, recognizing that responsibility, uh, established a program several years back where we will actually go 50-50 with the property owner to cover the costs up to a certain amount uh, of, of replacing and maintaining uh, those sidewalks and keeping them in good working order. Okay, so the 50-50 is more a maintenance thing, not an installation thing. Am I understanding that correctly? That, that's correct. For, for installation, it's not specifically part of that program, but if, there's, if there is a segment of the community that's looking to install sidewalks, uh, the city wants to work with them on that because what we've found is in situations like that, uh, sometimes there aren't the, the proper uh, legal documents and easements that allow that to happen. And so we want to work with those property owners because, of course, if there's a sidewalk going in where there isn't, it's going to be going in where their lawn is. And so they're going to be giving up some lawn to do that. And we want to work with them uh, because, again, ultimately it makes the whole community safer. And there is, uh, there are neighbors in our community in particular uh, areas of town that have approached me about that. And we're going to try and work out solutions with them on it. So you're talking about even like sidewalks between driveways that would be where they would be giving up some lawn space correct 
I see. Well, I, it, it, and it may make a little less uh, yard work, but like you say, the maintenance, uh, clearing the snow, clearing the debris off the sidewalks. So it may not be necessarily a pecuniary uh, cost, but more of a um, sweat equity, like they like to say at Habitat for Humanity, uh, putting the time into making sure all that debris is cleared off and that sort of thing. Absolutely. I think that's a, that's a fair analogy to it. It's the sweat equity that we all put into our community to make it a better place. Man, that, that is really, really uh, a fantastic uh, thing that you're bringing up. So we look forward to hearing uh, future uh, details on, on those types of projects and just seeing how it all develops. Uh, any other things that you may want to uh, touch on here this morning, kind of as we, uh, as we go along here, things that you're excited about or things that you can talk about that uh, might inspire some listeners? You know, uh, the the biggest rule that I follow, Monty, is I, I try not to spill other people's tea. Uh, and, uh, yes. You know, too often, and you and I have joked before, politicians tend to take credit for other people's work. And, <laughs> uh, you know, I, I don't want to be that guy. Uh, and so the reality is, uh, as we look back in the last two years, there's been a lot of good investment. There's been a lot of hard work in overcoming challenges and exploring new possibilities and businesses. And from what we're hearing and seeing at the city, that's going to continue on. And so we want to continue to support and applaud all the members of this community that continue to invest in it and make it a better place every day. That is it's a really wonderful thing that people are doing. And it seems like a lot of people have, have taken an interest in it and really going down that road to revival and revitalizing this community because there's so many great spaces and great areas that could be used for the good. And I, I think that's an awesome step forward. Well said. All righty. Well, uh, Mayor Strick, I, I know you have to get on your way, but we definitely want to thank you for coming by and spending a little time with us here this morning. And uh, we look forward to having you in next week. Now, I know also there's been some talk about uh, getting some county officials in to talk about uh, different issues. Uh, and I don't know, that's, that's probably down the road a ways, but uh, hopefully we can get those uh, folks in as well. Yeah, we're very excited about that opportunity because there's there's all sorts of government entities that are working to make this place better and, and serve this community. And we want to make sure that uh, we're helping everybody uh, reach the community and, and get the message out there. Uh, there's a lot of good things happening here. All right. Well, sir, you certainly uh, have a fantastic day. And thanks for coming and spending a little time with us this morning. Hey, thanks for the opportunity, Monty. And thanks, everyone who's listening out there. Uh, be safe and have a wonderful day. All right. You do the same, sir. Here we go. <laughs>